back again with some more fun. I'm still working on some more Christmas presents. Christmas is two days away. I'm about to upload another video on how to etch glass. And now I'm about to upload a video on how to make these blank keychains with printable vinyl and a pretty HTV backing. I thought of this one day when I was at work and I don't want to fuss with epoxy. I'm sorry epoxy people. I don't have the time. I don't want the mess. And then I realized that at Hobby Lobby, well their white one, their paper studio brand HTV is the same color as it is on the back. Okay, so let me show you. I have the scrap piece I could show you. Part of my mess. Okay, so here's the glitter of the blue. Wait for it. There's the glitter of the back blue of the Paper Studio Hobby Lobby. So what I thought is why not take the Hobby Lobby HTV glitter Yes, it's white printable vinyl on this side, but the white glitter shows through the back side like it does for this back side blue glitter. All right? So that's my little hack for no epoxy because I don't want to, like I said, it's too messy and too time consuming. And it might not be a craft that I hold on to forever. So there's one that I made. And then... You saw the blue had those holes in it. I keep all my scraps. Don't ask me why. I keep my scraps. It's so I hole punched the purple that I had. And look how pretty that is. So I got the purple HTV scraps of glitter hole punched from Paper Studio. And then I printed out Blessed Mama. So this pr vinyl is permanent vinyl. It's not going to lift up. And I also, what I do is I trim around the edges with my knife so that way there's no lifting, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So what you're gonna want, you're gonna want your blank keychain, okay? Your iron or your little mini heat press, doesn't matter which it is. Teflon sheet, it's all the way over here for some reason. Handy dandy exacto knife. Mine's a fine point, so that helps trim the edges around. And then, printable vinyl, okay? You could use regular vinyl on the keychains after this. It's just printable vinyl is the easiest way, okay? So, printable vinyl for that. So, let's go over to the software, and I'm going to show you how I did it, and I'll show you guys that. So all these images on my screen are my trials and my errors. I've made quite a few errors, but I worked around it and made it work. So you're one maybe wondering how I got the circles to fit exactly on it. So here's my blank. And then I got my ruler. And then it's a little under two inches to be honest. So when I did a two inch circle and I cut it out on my silhouette, it wasn't exactly on so I had to keep playing with it and up and down the circle icon which is if I duplicate this one up and down it see this one is the one that's for sure the perfect size this is my worksheet basically is what I'm calling it for my keychains so I want this one and then I also uploaded a photo that I'm gonna make for my sister. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that right now. So we're gonna go, let's see. Shrink that down, get rid of that. Where is he? Here he is. Copy. Where'd it go? Why is it when I wanna do a video? Nothing works the way I want it to. Copy. We'll find then. Be that way. We'll just drag that little sucker over here. So let go. There we go. He's dragged over here. 
And then I'm gonna go back to my template. And just grab one of these scrap pieces. And then copy, paste it. And we're gonna set that to no fill for right now, okay? Get rid of that design in there. I don't need it no more. Okay, so this is the exact circle that I need to get him to fit in, okay? So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna adjust it the best you can. So his name is Gizmo, he's my sister's dog. And I figured I would make her a cute little keychain. So we're still working on it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this picture so that way I have a copy. So that way I don't have to keep copying and pasting and copying and pasting. So there's our circle in front of our picture. Let me zoom in for you. So I'm gonna just stretch the picture over the circle. All right, there we go. So now you're wondering, if not, I'm gonna show you anyways, is how are we gonna get the picture to show up in the circle, in the circle, not the square, right? So highlight both of those. Over here on the right side, there should be the open modify panel. That's four buttons down from the text panel on Silhouette Studio, okay? So open modify panel, and up at the bottom right, you're gonna see crop right here, okay? Oh, I didn't do it right. I knew I wasn't gonna do it right, but we'll try it again. So stretch it out, oops, go back. I'm not perfect, guys, so don't judge me too much, okay? I'm learning with everybody else. We'll adjust it. I want as much as him as I can get in there. So that didn't work. I thought crop would work. Okay, crop did work. I just didn't do something right. Don't ask me what I did right. I don't remember already, okay? So I like that-ish. So what I'm gonna do, is so I'm gonna zoom out. And I'm gonna take this photo, the duplicate, which is exact the same thing as that guy. And I'm gonna to try to make it work. All right. Oh, you know what I should have done? I should have duplicated that circle. So that way I don't have to worry about my sizing. So what I did is I duplicated the circle picture back down to this picture. And then I'm gonna set no fill. Where'd it go? Okay. I don't know why it did that. Oh, it turned the line color off for some silly reason. No fill. What on earth? Okay, fine. Where is it? Copy. Paste. Sorry guys, I I do know what I'm kind of doing, I promise. Okay, so there's my template circle. We're just gonna make a few of those. And there is an easier way to duplicate besides click, 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 and click, but that worked out for me. So what I wanna do I want to get most of his cute little body in the circle. So I have to stretch it out just right. So you see the red part is the circle. And that's kind of where I want him in at. You got to have some excess picture to play with in there at the same time. I want to make sure I get his ear. There, I kind of like that. That's kind of cute. Okay. So, we got the circle. We got the picture. We're going to go over to our modify and crop it. There we are. There it is. Okay. 
So it's perfect. This one I like the best. No. No, 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 no. What happened? I don't know what happened. Okay. That's the same size as my circle, so I honestly don't know how that one got bigger. I probably did something wrong. Who knows? Most likely I did something wrong. So I'm going to copy it. Paste it. Come off layer and paste. Fine. We'll just copy and paste this one onto the other page. How about that? Paste. Okay. So we're going to get rid of the circles. Set him off to the side. And what we're going to do is we're going to do print and cut. Don't be afraid of print and cut. I promise. It's super easy. And I'm going to show you step by step. So machine, Cameo 4. Cutting mat, auto, Cameo 4. Media letter size, I cut it down to a four by six. So I'm gonna have to adjust that myself, four, six. Cause I'm not gonna use a whole sheet of printable vinyl of an eight and a half by 11. So I cut it down this time. And so over to the right, I'm gonna go here, turn on registration marks, Print bleed. We're going to drag those over here. Okay, so there we are. Do your best if you can not to get in the gray and not to get in the red. Okay, because this red mark, that's where it, um, that's that cut line and print border line. And the gray line is the registration area to where the machine reads. Because when you guys see the machines go down, 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 catch it, go down, catch it in here, and go back up and catch it up here. So when the picture's not in the way of that, that makes it so much easier for the cameo to cut it out, okay? <clears throat> and then always, 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 unless you're a pro, I'm not a pro and I want high quality cuts is leave your print and cut at default. Okay guys, when you leave it at default, that's for sure gonna give you the right cut and at the right edges, if that makes sense. So we're gonna go over to file, print. This is the print preview. Something's not right. I need a four by six. This is set to eight and a half by 11. So settings. Four by six, push okay. So that tells the printer that it needs to cut it in four by six, but we're still not done yet. So print, I have my Epson EcoTank 47,000. So we go to preferences. I have it always set to default on plain paper, bright white paper. The printable vinyl that I'm using is a glossy so that way it's scratch resistant and water resistant. So don't leave it on plain paper, bright white paper, or else it's not gonna work right, okay? So you're gonna go down to, you can do ultra premium photo paper glossy, premium paper photo glossy. I'm gonna do ultra. Honestly, I'm gonna leave that at standard quality. I like my standard quality better than my high quality. For some reason, I've talked to Epson and they didn't have an answer for me. On the high quality, it prints the pictures darker than what they should be. And I really don't like that. I like it crisp as I see it on my screen. So we're going to push OK and then apply. And so now we're going over to the printer. All right, so we're at my eco tank, and then I have my paper of it's supposed to be four by six, but I cut it a little bit longer, but it should be all right. So it's gonna go down like this in the printer. All right. And with the Epsoms, at least on my Epson, there's little blue markers on the inside that you gotta drag, on the drag to the paper so that way it feeds correctly. Okay, so that should be flush. 
All right, when you put new paper in, see if you guys can see that when it focus. It says previous setting plain letter paper. We're just gonna confirm that for now. And then I'm gonna show you guys that screen again as soon as I push the print button, because it's gonna change. So pushing print. Okay, so paper does not match your print settings. Confirm current setting. Push proceed. And it's gonna say plain paper, change setting. You wanna to go to change setting. If you don't change setting, it's not going to print on the settings that you have it at. It's gonna print at your default settings. So paper setting will be changed. So print. Shouldn't take too long, because it's only four by six. And you guys are about to see why I love my Epson EcoTank so much. Like, it's amazing. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. I posted a video on print and cut trick or treat stickers. Um, this is more of a detailed version than my trick or treat stickers, because I did those quick, fast, and in a hurry. It's coming slowly, but it's coming. Almost there, I promise. And if you guys were wondering how much ink does this use up, I've had this for over eight months. And if you can see at the bottom right corner, that's all the ink that I've used. And I've been printing a lot compared to what I usually print when I have cartridges. And I got so annoyed with cartridges and replacing cartridges and spending $20 on each cartridge. It was just insane, okay? Yeah, I hated it. So there is the photo. And there is my own decal. I'm making this top one for my sister. This bottom one's for myself. But it's pretty. It's gorgeous. Love, love, love it. But Gizmo, he's super cute. And I'm going to put that on a keychain for her for this Christmas. So we're going to send this over to the cameo here in a second. Okay, so i got to stop bumping that tripod. So I got my cameo all set up. The mat's already in with the paper. So go send. Why? Uh-oh. I messed up somewhere. Hold on. All right, I'm gonna show you guys what I did wrong and how I'm gonna fix it. So I did the crop, but I didn't put convert to path. So there's no cut line on a little gizmo here. All right, and a quick hack to fix that don't take that away because you need the exact measures of where that is. So zoom in. Make a duplicate of your other circle since it's the correct circle and correct size. We're not going to reprint it. We just need it to cut that circle. Okay, guys? So just line up that circle the best you can to make it flush on that back picture. Zoom out and let you guys see. So... Gizmo's gone, but he's printed on that paper versus reprinting on new printable vinyl. I just duplicated this bottom circle and dragged it up top to cover him up. Okay, so we're going to push send and now it's back at two circle lines, which is the way I like it, which is perfect. So action, cuts, ratchet. The reason why you guys see me doing this in my videos is because I'm using the CB09 blade. <clears throat> really? And it's a little bit sharper than the auto blade. Hi, honey. That is my cat, Twilight. He's saying hi to everybody. So those are my settings. And I'm going to show you guys the print and cut of it. So I'm about to push thin, and then it's going to do its registration mark.
loud? Come on now. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but this is the cut line. And this is the reason why I said turn on that print bleed. So that way you have all that barrier of print color versus it white. Because when I talked to Silhouette a few months ago, is print cut has like 1 16th of a white edge on print and cuts. I'm not sure why, but it does. But that's the workaround of that is turn on your print bleed and then it's gonna outstretch the white background or the white, yeah, the color border around your cut because the circle is the exact cut mark. It cut perfect circle of how I had it set up. So th the printer just printed a little bit of extra color and stretched out the picture on the very, very end edge, okay? This is my actual picture I set it up for, but it, at that end edge right there, that's where the print bleed came into effect. So I'm gonna peel these off after I get the um, HTV glitter on those acrylics. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. All right, so while my iron is warming up, your acrylics that you get, at least the ones that I got from Amazon, are gonna come with an anti-scratch plastic piece on it. You're gonna wanna peel that away. Throw it away, throw it away. And it's gonna be on both sides. We're gonna to wanna to peel off both sides while we're waiting for the iron to wake up. Ugh, throwing things. So now it's nice and crystal clear on both of them instead of that little film on the back. All right. And these are my glitter backings that I'm going to use. I already had these set up, print and cut, and a mask cut for um the backings when I make these Christmas gifts for other keychains. I'm going to break out my little silicone mat here so I don't melt my pretty vinyl tabletop. My handy dandy. I'll put it on here. Put it on there. Then I got my little sheet of Teflon that came with my little cute iron. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? You don't know what I'm gonna do. What am I gonna do? I don't even know what I'm doing. Okay. One more thing that I can use. Sorry again for bumping tripod. I felt it. Is if you have any of your leftover heat transfer tape or hot fix tape or whatever the heat transfer material comes off of. It's handy when doing this. Just stick it on there. Lay it flat on your circle or on your keychain here. Put it on the Teflon sheet. And then iron it on like you normally would. Do medium pressure in about a medium setting on the iron or heat press. I don't have a massive heat press. I only have minis and a portable and an iron, and I'm perfectly happy with those. But I'm sure if you know how to use your big heat press and you choose you want to do this, you should be good if it's a low temperature and a quick high pressure or however you guys set your heat presses up. Me, I have weak hands, so everything's high pressure or low pressure. Okay, lift that up. There we go. It is going to be hot, okay? So you're going to burn yourself if you want to touch it hot. I've gotten used to it. I like the warmth. It feels good to my hands. And it was off by a little bit, but the shrinkage, but it should be okay. All right. I don't know if you guys can see that, but on that edge is a slight little edge. So it could have shifted a little bit, but I already know I have to trim it. So it's the exacto knife for that reason. I got it right here. Be careful, sharp objects. And just trim away the HTV from the acrylic edge there. You don't want to peel it, because it's still warm. So it could come up, but we don't want that. I'm just kind of cutting that edge off to have a smooth edge. And you could think, oh, using epoxy is so much simpler. It could be for the people that want to mess with it. Like I said earlier in this video, I don't want to mess with it. This is my little workaround. Maybe one day I'll play with it. But until then, I'm pretty happy with it this way.
I'm trying to get that trimming. All right, and we also have the hole that we have to punch. So I have a very sharp knife. Now cut in that hole and cut out the key for that. And you don't have to, I suggest doing it. I su suggest repressing it real quick, just to make sure it's stuck on there after I maybe would have lifted it up a little during the cutting. And then that hole, I know it lifted up a little bit. I'm just gonna make sure it rubs it on there real good, okay? Nice and warm. Okay, so this one I'm gonna use for my sister. You can use um, transfer tape on printable vinyl, but honestly, I'm just going to carefully peel it away from the backing and from the excess because it's all one piece. Gently, carefully. There we go. So I peeled it up in one piece pretty clean. Got my circle down. Try to get it as even as I possibly can. Squeezing him on there. All right, looking good. All right, so there's our little gizmo, my sister's dog. And there is the glitter HTV backing. So if you guys want a good um, workaround of epoxy on these acrylics, I say find an HTV that has the same color backing as it does on the front, which is for sure the Paper Studio glitter. I don't know about all the fancy sister glitter and cricket glitter. I like to use Hobby Lobby brand for my personal projects. So here we go. So any questions, let me know down in the comments down below. And I wish you guys a Merry Christmas.